Watch out. Wait, you're at level zero, boys, please. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are doing great. I appreciate it. I know this is hard. This is a, a lot to take in in the morning. Um, let's go on the record. This is in case CR 197127. Case caption State of Adam Plaintiff versus Robert Edward Ross, defendant. The record this morning will reflect the presence of the defendant, Mr. Ross. Good morning. With counsel, Ms. Maureen McQuellen, Mr. Richard Haas on behalf of the state, and Ms. Akuma of the Division of Parole and Probation. This matter is on the court's calendar today for the purposes of sentencing. The record will reflect that uh, Mr. Ross previously pled guilty to furnishing weapon, facsimile, intoxicants, or controlled substance to state prisoner, a gross misdemeanor. The court is now in receipt of a pre-sentence investigation report prepared by the Division of Parole and Probation dated February 6, 2020. And um, that precinct investigation report has some attached documentation, includes the Division of Parole and Probation Sentencing Recommendation Selection Scale, the uh, Division of Parole and Probation uh, Success Probability Scoring Sheet, and the defendant's handwritten statement dated February 6, 2020. Um, Ms. McQuillan, do you have a copy of the pre-sentence investigation report and, and its attachments? Yes. Do you or your client have any factual corrections? No. And Mr. Haas, does the state have the pre-sentence investigation report and show any factual corrections? We do. We reviewed it. I don't see any factual corrections at this point in time. Okay. And uh, Ms. McQuillan, any evidence today for purposes of sentencing? No. Mr. Haas, any evidence? No, just regarding it. You may proceed with argument. Ms. McQuillan. My argument, Your Honor, is that um, Robert Ross uh, did uh, admit freely and knowingly to engaging in this illegal activity at the jail of uh, making illicit alcoholic beverages. Uh, Deputy District Attorney uh, Mr. Haas and I have discussed this matter on many times uh, as to what we thought the appropriate penalty should be. And that is to send a clear message, Your Honor, to uh, inmates at the jail that this behavior will not be tolerated um, and, uh, and to have that fact on his record so that officials in the event of any future uh, proceedings know that, that this event occurred and, and, and he was punished for it. Now, our recommendation was a 30-day penalty in uh, Humboldt County Detention Center. The pre-sentence report goes way above and beyond what we had contemplated, and I, I just can't figure out why. They are recommending 180 days suspended uh, with the conviction of the gross demeanor, with successful completion of the 18-month adult uh, drug work program. Your Honor, I ask that you uh, accept the plea agreement as set forth in our, in our uh, uh, negotiated and written and accepted by the court plea agreement and uh, sentence Mr. Ross according, accordingly to an appropriate penalty of 30 days. Thank you, Mr. McQuillan. Uh, Mr. Ross? Briefly, briefly, Your Honor, I, the state concurs with Ms. McQuillan. Uh, and would ask this court to sentence Mr. Ross to the recommended 30 days in the Humboldt County Detention Center. Mr. Ross admitted to, in essence, making Pruno in the jail. The big thing about that is you really can't have it in the jail. It causes problems and it, it can lead to many other things. The tag on his record that he has is certainly would put it if he's ever in custody again. The no, everyone on notice that he's done that before. So that's kind of the thought process on it. The other thought process on it is, is, is a deterrent for other inmates. You cannot make Bruno. How do we get that to stop? There's a charge, Mr. Ross did into that charge, and there's got to be a consequence in that charge. What's your appropriate consequence? The state, through negotiations, has this recommendation of 30 days. We stand by the recommendation of 30 days. Mr. Ross admitted to it. There's a consequence of 30 days. It sends a message to the jail and it punishes Mr. Ross for what he did. We think that's an appropriate recommendation. We ask this court to accept that recommendation. Thank you. Your Honor, Ross. also, too, there's a, there was a co-defendant, it's not to cut you off, I apologize, but uh, 
The co-defendant has not been sentenced to an identical recommendation, I think, of 30 days, or it will be the state's recommendation for 30 days. I don't know if it's in the plea agreement at that point, but the state would make the same recommendation for 30 days. And we, if you want to approach, I can tell you that other one. Yeah. No, that's fine. Ms. Kruger? Division for motivation, have anything further to add? Um, yes, Your Honor. The reason why the division uh, recommended the um, the term that it did probation is because it is very clear that the defendant has problems with drugs and alcohol, and if he just goes into jail for 30 days and he comes back out, he still has problems with drugs and alcohol, and it's it, he's a danger to society if he doesn't uh, receive any help, and that's why the division was recommending um, that he attend the Either the GY or program or the drug court program because uh, Mr. Ross clearly needs uh, help with his addictions. Mr. Ross, before I impose a sentence on you, you have the right of allocution, which means that you may make a statement to the court or present information in mitigation of punishment. Do you wish to make a statement? <coughs> in your statement that you were having difficulty detoxing from alcohol. Yeah, yeah uh, yes. I, I, I'm not on alcohol I'm done detoxing. Assumptions, but um, I don't. I don't have a. I don't have any type of drug or alcohol assessment, um, and um, which which may give me uh, better information about uh, the extent of, of this problem or issue, if there is one. Um, so the court today. Do you have anything else on for allocution? Did I cut you off? Yeah, no, sir. Okay. Uh, the court here today hearing no legal cause why you should not be sentenced and based upon your plea of guilty. This court does now pronounce you guilty of the crime of furnishing a weapon, facsimile, intoxicants, or controlled substances to state prisoner, a gross misdemeanor in accordance with the laws of the state of Nevada will be the order and judgment of this court. Let the defendant, Robert Edward Ross Jr., be sentenced as follows. As a part of the sentence in this case, the court renders judgment against you in the amount of $3 for a DNA collection fee, $25 administrative assessment fee, a $250 public defender fee, and um, the court agrees with counsel that there there has to be some consequence for this type of conduct in, in the detention center. Um, the thing the court is concerned about is if this is to send a message and also to punish uh, you for this illegal behavior and to send a message uh, to the community or those who are incarcerated um, I'm concerned that 30 days is, is, um, doesn't send much of a message. Uh, the court today is going to sentence the defendant to 90 days in the Humboldt County Detention Center. Um, and there is no credit for time served in this matter, and you'll be remanded to the custody of the sheriff to carry out this sentence. We'll be in recess.